Hello, today I've got a helper in the shop. Say hi, Jay. Hi. And uh, we are going to be doing a little work on a Toyota Corolla that needs some front brake work. And we're going to take you through some uh, steps that we, we've gone through to safely raise the vehicle and then disassemble the brakes and uh, clean up the corrosion on the brake discs and then uh, you know reassemble everything and put it back down so uh, a new new change for us today is Jay will be helping us with the instruction for the first part of this video we'll talk about how to position the car on the hoist this hoist is a portable hoist so we set it up in the center of our garage when you're positioning your vehicle on the hoist make sure that your vehicle is like centered side to side and that your weight is balanced we move these arms out of the way so that when we drive the car over the hoist, they don't block the wheels. The next thing that we have to do is position the lifting pads. There are safe places to lift the vehicle and not safe places. Safe places are near the front and the back of the rocker panels or under the subframe. In this case, we have placed the lift arm underneath the subframe. We did a test lift first and we found that the hoist was touching the exhaust before the hoist was touching the frame. So to fix that, we took a piece of 2x4 as a spacer and put it on top of the lift pad. Now it's time to lift the car. To lift the car, this hoist is an electrical hydraulic hoist, so we press the green button. <laughs> Once the wheels come off the ground six inches, you should stop to make sure that the car is safely on the horse. Go to each of the four wheels and we push on them to make sure that the car is stable. And if the car seems stable on the horse, then you should be able to raise it the rest of the way. Lifting the hoist, you should watch your roof to make sure that you're not going to hit anything. One key piece that's important with the hoist is to make sure that the safety is engaged. It's not locked right now, so we should raise it up until it hits the next lock point. Now the lock mechanism has just dropped in and out. So we want to lower the hoist down until it engages the lock mechanism. This is the lowering lever right here. Now that the lock mechanism is fully engaged, there isn't any stress on the lifting control, hydraulic control. If the hydraulic hose was cut for any reason, the car wouldn't fall down. So at this point, we're going to strive. So at this point, we're going to describe the symptoms of the problem. When we press the brakes we hear a small grinding noise. And it comes and goes and we think this is because of corrosion on the brake disc. The corrosion can build up so to get at the brake disc we have to remove the hubcap, the wheel, and the brake caliber. These hubcaps here are made of plastic and they're quite fragile so we have to be careful when removing them. To properly remove this Hubcap, we need to put two fingers behind each spoke and then pull it straight out. Put the hubcap aside so that you don't step on it. Next, we have five wheel nuts to remove. And to do that, we're going to use an air impact wrench. Normally, we'd use a 21 millimeter deep socket and the black one, the type used for impact wrenches. We don't have one that's a 21 millimeter deep impact socket. We'll use what we have in more safety glasses. Guess these sockets could shatter when you're using an impact wrench. We should really stop and collect all the nuts. Next, we'll take the wheel off the car. 
And then slide this out of the way. So, trip on it. So now we're looking at the disc and the caliber. We need to remove the caliper so that we can get the disc. To do that, we'll put the ignition on the on position so that we can turn the steering wheel. Now I have the caliber facing out and it's easier to work on. To remove the caliber, we have two 17mm bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom. But we don't have to remove the side pin bolts. So we're going to use a 17mm socket on an impact wrench. Notice that we added a bungee cord so that the caliber doesn't fall off when we remove the bolts. Set your bolts aside and don't get them dirty because if they've been assembled right before they would have anti tcs on them. Okay. Before taking the caliber away from the disc, twist it to the side so that it compresses the piston and the bore. Okay. Now it can be removed. And we set it and we take the disc off. Just rest it there. We don't want to put any stress on this brake line. That's why we have the bungee cord there. This brake came off easily because when it was previously installed, we used anti-seize compound. Now we have the brake disc in our hand and we can easily see the corroded areas on the disc. And these are the areas that are causing the grinding noise when we press on the brake pedal. We're assuming that it's the brake disc that's the problem because we've inspected the brake pads and they're in pretty good condition. At this phase, we're going to take a grinder and clean off all the corrosion on the brake disc. It's often a raised part where the smooth metal and the rough metal meet, like, and that causes grinding. The other thing you might notice is chunks of rust along the edge. Take, it. take your camera and break all that rust off. So. We use this air grinder with a coarse sandpaper to clean off the rust. Also, we can use this welder chipping hammer to bang off the rust. It's important to clean up all the loose rust even on the inside of the disc. Because if you don't, that rust might get stuck in between the brakes and the pads and make noise. Now you notice that in the areas that we've done, all the high parts, the rust have been taken away. Even on the inside of the caliber, we've broken free all of the loose rust. We'll now do the rest of the disc. So we can see the inner surface, the outer surface, and then on the inside of the disc, it's cleaned out now. That's. On the outside of the disc, we have this inner surface and this outer surface clean. It's time to reinstall. It's easy this to put anti-seize on the wheel studs before you put the wheel back on. And also put anti-seize on your caliber bolts. really only needs a little bit. Take your brake disc and clean all the oil off of it and grease off of it. Slide it back in. Undo your bungee cord. Put the caliber back where it should be. Screw it in. Just 
Do the caliber mounting bolt too. Tighten them to 76 foot pounds. Rotate your wrench up and get, there you go, you're in. Good. We've got the torque wrench set to 76 foot pounds. We're gonna tighten the caliber mount bolt. When you pull on a torque wrench, you only pull on it until it clicks and then you stop. Go ahead. Good, that's one. Down. Good. Now pull. Good. Now we have the real wheel reinstalled. We need to hand thread it every nut, lug nut. So now we're going to use a torque limiting bar on the impact wrench. Tighten these just under 80 foot pounds. Okay. Okay. And we'll do a crisscross pattern. You gotta get the socket right on the nut first. Yeah. Okay. And now that you've got them all torqued down, you can go over them once again and clang on it like two, three seconds each time. Clang. Good. It's crisscross pattern, always crisscross pattern. Good. Before you put the, your vehicle down on the ground, make sure it's in park or the emergency brake is on so that it doesn't roll. To lower the hoist, you first have to disengage the safety. You do that by raising the hoist two inches and then moving the safety out of the way. So we'll do that with the hoist right now by pressing that green button. And the safety is now disengaged. Now we can use our control lever to move the safety out of the way. And while the safeties move out of the way, we can lower the hoist all the way. And down it goes. And now the car is resting on its wheels. Now, now that it's on the ground, we can give the wheel nuts a final torque of 76 foot pounds. Good. Crisscross pattern, right? Good. 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 Last one. Now you can move your lift arms out of the way and back your vehicle off the hoist. Good luck with your do-it-yourself project.